Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kristen Kennedy. I'm the Executive Director at the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at the University of Nevada, Reno. Thank you so much for being with us today for our performance, Hot World Music and Cool Jazz. We are so excited to offer this performance as part of Art Town's 25th anniversary. I encourage you to go check out the arttown.org website because there are some wonderful performances throughout the entire month. Um, today we have Dallas, um, Dallas Smith and Susan Mazur um, as our performers. Um, they've been collaborating since 1984. Dr. Susan Mazur and Dallas Smith create some of the uh, finest contemporary instrument, instrumental music available. Their compositions for harp and woodwinds merge the aesthetics of jazz, classical, and world music into an experience that feeds both the intellect and spirit. Together, they founded Healing Healthcare Systems, which provides the Care Channel 24-hour relaxation programming for healthcare settings. Uh, musical care is in Reno at all of the renowned facilities, uh, the VA, Northern Nevada Medical Center, Lake Forest and Truckee, Carson Tahoe Medical Center, and Barton Memorial. And uh, these are in addition to about a thousand other healthcare organizations in the US and abroad. Their music has been featured on NPR, the Discovery Channel, and NOVA. Dallas and Susan are the founders and sponsors of the Elder Care Concert Series in Reno, Nevada, which is administered by the Sierra Arts Foundation. Dallas, along with Scott Marshall, hosts Saturday Night Jazz on KNCJ, sister channel of KUNR. And Dallas is also the president of the board of the Reno Jazz Orchestra. So thank you, Dallas and Susan, for being with us today. And I hope everybody enjoys the performance. Thank you, Kristen. It's our pleasure to uh, play for you and speak to you today. As strange as it is to speak to a camera and a computer in an empty room, uh, this is the way of the present during our coronavirus that musicians don't have gigs, we have the internet. Thank goodness for the internet. We'd really be lonely without that. We want to thank all the members of OLLI who are joining us today, and we also want to especially thank our friend Rich Siegel, who has facilitated our participation for OLLI in the past and present, and I'm sure in the future. So we are going to play a variety of music for you today, and we're going to talk some about our work and perhaps talk about our music. We are jazz musicians, which means that we improvise, and we are improvising this performance for you or this presentation to you. It's not something that we have done before, and it'll probably be something we might never do again, at least not in the same way. But for that, it is spontaneous. It is in the present. You had to be here. So thanks for joining us. We're going to start with uh, a piece of music that actually needs no introduction because it's one of the most famous pieces in the world. And you're going to hear my saxophone and you're going to hear Susan playing the electroacoustic concert grand harp. So I also want to let you know if you cannot hear us, we have pushed the sound on our end as much as we can. Turn up your speaker and your computer we also encourage you, if you can, listen on headphones. Uh, that will give you the most glorious sound because the speakers in your computer are great, but not the greatest. So we're so happy to be here. It's, we'd like nothing better to do on this July 10th than play for you.
So we have played that piece for so many years, I don't tell anybody anymore. But indeed, it gives us so much room to experiment musically and to re-express the meaning Gershwin had, the famous summertime. So the next piece we're going to do is a piece I wrote. For those of you who don't know my sordid past, I have two degrees in music. And after I left Stanford with a master's, I, I moved to San Francisco and crossed from classical to the dark side of music to jazz. And I played there for 12 years and then performed in Lake Tahoe for 15 years. So my repertoire is long, but while I was in, at the Harris, at the summit, playing six hours a night, it gave me an opportunity to really improve my craft to improve my sound and to compose. So this piece was inspired by Lake Tahoe and it is called Lake Sunset. I just wanted to mention that uh, this piece has been recorded on one of our CDs and uh, this is an audience that still has CD players, I think. So if you are interested in our music on CD after the concert, we can, you can send us a message and we'll make that happen.
All right, Lake Sunset by Susan Mazur. So uh, Susan and I both have classic classical backgrounds. Uh, in fact, my classical instrument was the clarinet. But I'd just like to say that we consider jazz to be America's classical music. And I didn't make that up. That's been said by many people. But um, our style of jazz, or, or rather the genre of jazz, is one of America's prime cultural exports, perhaps our best one at this day and age. And we know that just like European classical music has spread around the world and is practiced by musicians around the world, so is American jazz. So we're proud to be classical musicians that became jazz musicians. We're going to continue now with another uh, uh, jazz piece by the famous pianist Bill Evans. Bill Evans was really one of the uh, big stars in the firmament of, of jazz stars. Uh, for his innovation, he set the tone for modern jazz piano, and he is, uh, he is certainly uh, emulated and imitated, being the highest form of flattery. He was a composer as well, and he composed this song for his son named Evan. Evan Evans. Hmm, would that require therapy later on for that, having Evan Evans as your name? They never get his name wrong. Yeah, well, in any case, this is Bill Evans' tune, Letter to Evan.
Letter to Evan, composed by Bill Evans for his son, Evan Evans. We love that tune. We learned that tune in the first year of our relationship when we played with pianist Ahmad Jamal. And we may end up doing something by Ahmad later on. But uh, in any case, uh, that's how jazz gets passed from, from one performer to another. And uh, we learn from each other, and we influence each other, and the music evolves like that. That's what makes it a, a living, vibrant, dynamic art form. So that's why we love jazz. That's why we love playing jazz. Now, we're going to have a little musical quiz now. And uh, Susan is going to play a tune that is the most famous tune by this composer. We'll see if anyone can guess. that everybody knows the title of that tune, The Shadow of Your Smile, really one of the great jazz standards by a great composer that we just lost a week ago. His name is not as well known as the song, but the composer is Johnny Mandel. And uh, he lived 94. He lived to 94. Other tunes that he uh, composed were uh, Emily, a Time for Love, the theme from M.A.S.H., the movie M.A.S.H., he composed the theme. He also composed a song that is not so well known, and part of what Susan and I love to do is to play tunes that are perhaps not as well known as those standards. I think every jazz musician has played The Shadow of Your Smile many, many times at wedding receptions and at parties and in concerts. Uh, less known is Johnny Mandel's song, Moon Song. So we are going to play Moon Song by Johnny Mandel.
Moonsong by Johnny Mandel. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about the instrument I'm playing. And if you really take a deep look into the picture, you'll see that there's another harp right next to me. I actually own three harps by accident. The harp I'm playing now was <coughs> owned by my harp teacher, who's 992 and can't play. But I bought it from her 10 years ago and left it with her until she told me it was time to take it, which was a year ago. When Liz turned 70, she had already played 35 years in the Detroit Symphony, retired, moved to Arkansas, played in the Arkansas Symphony, the Oklahoma Symphony, and then finally she said, I want to go back to my jazz roots. So she bought this harp, which is an electroacoustic harp, and did her one and only recording, Swing Easy, which Dallas will be featuring on his Saturday Night Jazz, either this week or next week. And um, so this harp has a pickup on every string that is tuned to the exact pitch that it is meant to amplify. And then all these 47 strings amplified are mixed down to a stereo output. Um, it's very difficult to amplify the harp because it's a full range instrument. There is a lot of sustain, like I can talk for hours and hours and that string will resonate and resonate. So when you see me stopping the strings, that's exactly what I'm doing. My, I am operating like the damper pedal on the piano, that I want to clean the sound up and, and I play the bass differently than it is played classically because as a jazz player, the bass has a different relationship than it does in classical music. So, and what are you gonna talk about, Dallas? Well, we thought we would take this opportunity that I would just show everyone some uh, exotic flutes from my collection. Susan and I have traveled quite a bit internationally and uh, most often to India because I'm also a student of Indian music. This is a little Indian folk flute that I bought on the street. It's, uh, I guess it's mass produced. It's got a sticker on it. And I can't remember what I paid, but it's probably about a dollar or two. So uh, I'm just gonna try it. Not a bad sound for a little $2 folk flute. The Indian flutes are really quite good. Now, the smaller the flutes go, the higher they get. This one is really like a piccolo. Let's hear this one. It's also an Indian flute. Also one joint of bamboo. so high that uh, I wouldn't want to play it so much inside, but these flutes were originally shepherd's instruments that uh, the flutists liked to play while they were tending their sheep to pass the time. Now this little flute, I believe is also Indian, but this is different because rather than being a transverse flute played to the side, this is an end-blown flute, but also quite high. Let's hear that. good for a really tiny, tiny little flute. Is that still a dollar? <laughs> it's actually very well made. Yeah. So the issue with all of these folk instruments is some of them are in tune, meaning that you can play them and they'll be in tune to concert pitch. So, you, so Dallas, for instance, can play with me, and some of them won't be. Yeah, now here I have an exotic inblown flute. Is that uh, Chinese? That's Chinese? Chinese. So yeah. I may have gotten this in Chinatown in San Francisco, but this is inblown. Let's hear this one. Not 
Not bad. Not t- not too bad for a cheap inexpensive. souvenir. Souvenir. Inexpensive. Inexpensive. I don't like the word cheap. Okay. Well, let's see. There's w- uh, two more flutes to show you. If we kept going higher and higher, this is uh, a very exotic instrument. You might hear this in a cartoon. One more time. <laughs> well, our dog has not awakened yet, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. One more flute. This is uh, a very wonderful dual toned Native American flute. We were driving, I guess, in Arizona, Arizona. or somewhere, and we saw this, the flute store or something mm-hmm. like that, and I bought this, this instrument, so I'll just play this for a little bit. That's beautiful. Now you're going to want me to play this one more. I may want you to play (laughs) that one more. A beautiful uh, modern Native American flute. Play it again. I'll see if it's a real pitch. Go ahead, play it. This is actually the first time I ever played this in a concert for everyone. So it's the first time I ever heard it, actually. Well, it's because it's sat in the, sat bas- in the basket corner, with all right. those other flutes. But uh, it's a nice thing, actually. I have too many instruments to practice. But now I'm going to bring out, actually, uh, a very legitimate classical Indian flute. This is called the Bansuri. And uh, this is the instrument that I studied when I studied classical music and I consider it a lifelong study so I'm still working classical on it. Hindustani classical music. Hindustani music, right. North Indian, North Indian classical music. So we're going to play a piece that is truly world music. It's written by our friend Christian Pauline from Stockholm, Sweden and so we have an Indian instrument, a Swedish composer, played by Americans. So this is the essence of world music. And the title of this is a little bit humorous. Christian, the composer, was suffering from hepatitis when he composed this song. And so he named this song Yellow Fellow.
Yellow Fellow by our friend Christian Pauline. So uh, we're going to have a harp solo now. Susan Mazur is going to play a piece by guitarist Pat Metheny. It's a beautiful piece that uh, has been played by lots of different musicians and now also played by Susan. It's entitled James.
shared and you can delete so all this So I chat. think that uh, now is a good time to talk about our work in healthcare. Okay. So uh, when uh, Susan and I started a business actually 28 years ago called Healing Healthcare Systems. And we started originally with the intention of bringing music into healthcare because people would tell us, oh, your music is so healing. Well, what does that mean? We, we're just trying to play good music. If you tell me that it heals you, I can accept that, but I can't promise you that anything we do musically will heal you of anything. However, the feedback we get is mm -hmm. that our music brings peace, comfort, joy, pleasure to listeners, and so that's enough for us to keep doing it. And we started our business, just the two of us in our spare bedroom here in Reno, realizing very quickly that the need was bigger than just harp and flute. We needed other music. So we went to some friends of ours who had what we thought was compatible music to our own and started to create a music library of incredible music from incredible musicians who offered their music for our hospital channel called the Care Channel. And once we had the music, we thought, how can we distribute it? Well, this was the early 90s, and Walkman tape recorders were the media of the, di of the day. But we realized that was impractical for hospitals to have a basket of tape recorders that couldn't be sterilized, that could be stolen. And so we decided we would deliver the music through the in-room television because uh, every hospital room has a TV. And even though the speaker may only be one or two inches, it's better than nothing. And uh, then that also begged the question, well, what will the patients watch while they hear the beautiful music? And the nature, the answer, of course, is nature, because nature is recognized as being very natural. Biophilia, the human, human nature to, to love nature. We call it human nature. And so we have evolved the channel now from the two of us in our spare bedroom to 18 employees and the care channel being in hospitals in all 50 states. So I want to add a little bit to what Dallas said because there is research that has looked at how music affects us, whether it does. In fact, now because we have functional MRIs which allows someone to listen to music and their brain can be, um, can be watched to see what triggers it. Music actually triggers every single part of the brain. The right brain, the left brain, the hippocampus, the emotional place where all of us feel stress. It affects everything. And we engage with everything. So the research around music therapy, we have consulted and also for the kind of nature that would be the most therapeutic. We go to the science of environmental psychology, social psychology, and nursing science because nurses have done substantial research on what impacts the patient. And this work continues. Um, I'm a well-published author and if you go to our website, healinghealth.com, you can find the papers I've written. I have a blog. And also, you can see samples of the channel. So with that, what's our next piece? Actually, the next thing on our list was to do an improvisation. OK, so we can do that. I mentioned that jazz is, is improvisatory in nature, and so we have been playing pieces that we, we improvised in the style of the composition or in the style of the music according to the, to the chord changes, according to the melodic structure. But we're going to do something that is a little bit more daring, perhaps, and that is to create a spontaneous improvisation together uh, something that we've never done before, we've never rehearsed, we haven't talked about it, we didn't plan it, we're going to create something musically unique that was never in existence before and has never, will never be done again, but 
when Susan and I met way back in 1984, we played music together the first day we met. We met through a record company that introduced us. And uh, it was magic from the first day. So uh, we trust each other musically. We trust that uh, we can improvise together musically. It's like having a conversation. If you're having a verbal conversation, you don't have to plan out everything you're going to say and a new idea comes up and you take that idea and you respond and you continue the conversation. So that's what we're going to do musically with a spontaneous improvisation. And because Susan is the chordal instrument and uh, that characterizes the fact that she can play many notes at once. I can only play one note at a time, so I'm more a melodic functioning instrument. And we have those roles, but we, we stretch those roles. So here is, I don't know how it's going to be. Let's see. I'm, let the suspense build. What are they going to do? What are we going to play?
So music is composed to balance consonants and dissonance. The kind of tones that make you rest and the kind of tones that are harsh and demand resolution. And it is that tension that moves us through time, that causes us to engage. Dissonance and consonance. consonance. Right. So I'd like to do one more. And let's do two more. Hmm? Mariposa Negra. OK. You want to do a mod? Or? No. All right, we're going to play a piece that uh, composed by another Swedish friend of ours named Thomas Frickberg. And uh, he's a retired music teacher that I met way back in 1969. He's a dear, dear friend. And uh, we, Susan and I, play several of his pieces. Uh, there's Bulgarian Butterflies is another piece we play of his. But we're going to play a piece that has a Spanish title, perhaps a Brazilian samba rhythm, and composed by a Swede, performed by Americans. Again, our commitment to world music. This is Mariposa Negra, the Black Butterfly. <laughs>
All right, Mariposa Negro. I'm happy to tell again. So the CARE channel is a 24-hour channel. Uh, it is now living uh, in, on televisions in hospitals around the Korean. It is pure nature and instrumental music. It is time to follow the day-night cycle. So at night, at night where it is so deadly to be sick, uh, the nights are the worst because we have the least resources uh, to really deal with our stress. Uh, we provide a midnight star field which imbues a soft light into the room. So for hospitals, it's very inexpensive because it's a flat fee for every single television connected to their head end, which is where cable comes in. We update the channel every year. We now have a library of 84 high definition hours. We have a production studio and the production standards are according to the research that we have found. For example, um, natural landscapes are less stressful than cityscapes. And to have a pure natural environment without any human artifacts is far less distracting than to have, for instance, you have a beautiful mountain and you have boats in the lake and you have benches and you have people picnicking and very, very distracting. So we did not want to provide anything that would cause that kind of distraction. I'll add one thing that uh, had came up kind of early on in our work mm -hmm. when uh, we would go into a hosp hospital and people might say, well, this is a very interesting alternative therapy mm -hmm. that you are proposing here to use music, to which we said, there is no alternative environment. Mm -hmm. There's the environment as it is. Is it healing or is it not? Is it relaxing, is it therapeutic, or is it stress producing and something unpleasant? And so the music is part of the environment and it's our effort to create a more restful, therapeutic, relaxing environment through our CARE channel. CARE is an acronym for Continuous Ambient Relaxation Environment. Our entire focus has been on the environment, the micro environment in which the patient is, to include also family members, caregivers, but that environment holds within it the power to either increase our stress or decrease it. And that's why we produce the care channel, and it's 24 hours a day, because an admission day is 24 hours. Right. And we insist that hospitals may not charge patients mm -hmm. for our channel. Some hospitals charge for movies or other things, but we, our position is, why should a patient have to pay extra to be in a healing environment? It's the responsibility of the hospital to provide an environment conducive to healing. In the beginning, it was very difficult to convince them of that, but now at 28 years, uh, the hospital, we, but we've been with Barton Memorial for 27 years. We have been with Carson Tahoe for 17 years. Uh, we have long time clients who are really part of our story and we're part of their story. Let's Any see. other questions, Kristen? We do. Um, one person asked, where can, where can he purchase your CD? Okay. Healinghealth.com or call our office, 827-0300, 827-0300. You can give a phone order and give a credit card there, or you can go on our website. And, uh, well, are they on the Healing Health? Healinghealth.com. Yeah. Yeah. Healinghealth.com. And we have DVDs where some of our albums have then been used as soundtracks to gorgeous one hour of beautiful, nature. Um, the DVDs came following our production of the music, but our producers are amazing. And it's, and it's like the programming that is on the care channel in hospitals, mm -hmm. but you can have it at home anytime. So I actually have a question, if you don't mind. No of problem. course. Okay, uh, we have to get a little real with that. Uh, in the States, uh, we have a van and we lay it down. It has a big padded cover and we drive everywhere, which every harpist does. If it has to go to a remote area like Hawaii, which we've gone to, 
India, Europe, it has a huge trunk uh, that we could all have dinner in that the harp goes as freight and it has to leave about a week to 10 days before we do. However, uh, mm -hmm. most of the time we have rented harps in India and in uh, England and uh, other places and in Sweden. And yeah. uh, the only thing is that the harps that we find to rent are not the electroacoustic harp that Susan has, so she's forced to amplify an acoustic harp, which does not sound as good as her, her American-made Lion and Healy harp that you've just been hearing today. Yes, indeed, and thank you for your tolerance of the Zoom and Internet problems that uh, the recording hopefully will, will complete the transmission. And we love telling our story, we love playing music, so there's nothing we like to do than more to do than to share with, with you. So during this quarantine, we have been playing a half hour concert every Sunday at noon that you can see on Dallas Smith, uh, Dallas's Facebook page. And Facebook has made it very easy to do live concerts. And even if you're not a member of Facebook, you should be able to get there because we make it open to the public. Um, but that has kind of kept us alive and many musicians alive. I do want to just let you know the effect the quarantine has had on our local artists have been devastating. Every musician in Reno and Tahoe are unemployed. Around the world, musicians Around are the unemployed. world. And musicians generally are fee for service. You play, you get paid. You don't play, you don't get paid. So uh, fortunately, through the CARES Act, musicians have been able to apply for unemployment. But the cost of being a musician is high. And many of the musicians we know have families, they have homes, they have the same kind of expenses you do. My niece uh, is a musician in LA, and she has done concerts online, and she teaches on Zoom. But it's been very, very difficult. And we really, truly hope that when things loosen up, and I know that Rena Little Theater has started doing uh, performances online, it's a pay as you like, but it will help dramatically for you to continue monetarily supporting the arts here. Yes, when you want live music mm -hmm. like this, go online and there generally are live concerts to be found and many of them put up the uh, a button for you to pay something to contribute and uh, musicians need, need to be able to support themselves with their art. and. Uh, when we are able to play live again, please support your local musicians. All right, well, thank you so much. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Ali. Thanks for thank everyone. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Peyton.